we've got a big test to do. Hey everyone, welcome back. So I'm so excited for this video. We have got the Shrek iHeart Revolution collection. This was kindly gifted from iHeart Revolution themselves and I am so grateful. I smiled so much when I got it. But yeah, I just want to say thank you to them and also thank you to you guys as well because I literally wouldn't be getting this PR without you um, supporting my videos. So yeah. However, even though this was gifted, my opinion will not be manipulated in any way whatsoever. This is a massive collection, so I'm not going to come to my verdict in one video. I am going to do free looks with the Happily Ever palette today. And I'm going to do a separate video on the Fiona palette. And I'll probably do a Patreon video on one of these palettes. I also wanted to compare the formula of the shades to the Nutcracker palette because it is the same size. I know they're completely different palettes, but they're both £20 and I want to see which is better and which one I would recommend because you probably won't need both, but if you are flexible, yeah, go for it. So yeah, we also got the highlighter to test. I was going to be afraid of this because it does look quite dark, as you can see. Like, I still think... Mm, that smells well nice. It smells like gingerbread. And then we've got a lipstick to try. They did have a few others in the collection. They had a transformation one, which changes to your pH levels in your two skin. I swear all of them changed into the same color though anyway. So yeah, I'm really sorry that was a long intro. I just feel like I needed to get some points across before I just go straight into the video. So yeah, if you're interested to see how this palette performs, I keep on watching, hit subscribe, join my Patreon if you like. But yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. already I feel like this is going to be a long experiment so this is the palette and it does retail for £20 I love the illustration on here it's so cute you've also got illustrations on the back and then you got a preview of the cool story you also get one of those plastic sheets inside as well and this is what we are given so it's very touched. I have been doing some swatches just off camera, just getting a feel of the palette first. But yeah, I do have some opinions on this palette already, judging by the swatches. I also just want to compare it quickly to the Nutcracker. Now, I'm not saying these are the exact same palette, but they are the same price, they are the same size. So straight from the bat, I'd say the Nutcracker has more pinky blendy out shades, and I'd say the Shrek palette has more orangey transition shades. The Shrek one just looks more punchy and this one just looks more like delicate pastely um this one just looks like yeah right we're here so i have swatched the most similar shades that i could pick out of the two palettes so all the top comparison shades are from the shrek so this one is from Shrek and the pastel blue is from the Nutcracker. So the blue in here from Nutcracker I do not get on with whatsoever. However the Shrek blue it provides it's it's a lot brighter. Um, I just feel like it's got more pigment. So yeah, that's Shrek, that's not Cracker. And the two shimmers from the palette, the top one is Shrek and the bottom is Nutcracker. So I feel like the Shrek one is more smoother, it applies on easier, the Nutcracker you do have to dig in a bit. I have found that lately actually, I don't know whether it's because it's created a film over the pan now because I haven't used it in a while. Sometimes eyeshadows do that, I don't understand, but some eyeshadows from my Heart Revolution don't do that, like the Looney Tunes. So I'm hoping the Shrek doesn't do that. The two purples though, from the Nutcracker and Shrek, are identical. So the Shrek, this purple here, and the Nutcracker, this purple here, identical they look different in the pan but jesus they come off so identical i wonder if i can get my phone on there just to see a bit better because it does have like pink sparkles in there the two shimmer whites i'd say the nutcracker has more of a wet look to it it's more of a topper and the shrek is more of like a it's coming off powdery um but yeah so different formulas there i'd say and the two pinks, I'd say the Shrek is more pigmented, but you do have to dig in. So this pink here, I did struggle. I have found myself, I had to dig in to get that pigment. And the white's what I was on about before. This white comes off a bit powdery compared to the Nutcracker. So this is the Nutcracker. I'd say this is more glistening under lights and more of a wet look. I'm also just gonna put the swatches here so you can see, but I feel like for my first look, I'm thinking of touching into the green, touching into this shade here. I think this shade is really interesting. It's like a blue, but with a purple undertone to it. 
that blue there, it's so nice. And it is very different to the blue shimmer here. What I have noticed though that I feel like already this palette has too many golds going on. Like this one and this one looks very similar. So I feel like they could have just swapped that out and maybe put a full on yellow matte in there or something. Um, or even a black, I don't know, or a darker emerald green, that would be cool. I've just primed my eyelids with the Beauty Bay Eye Base. Okay, so the first shade I'm going to start off is this transition colour here. So this is quite an interesting shade. It looks grey, but it's got like a... It's got the tiniest lilac undertone to it. It's very neutral, but it got like a the tiniest lavender undertone, I'd say. Um, yeah, put on my brush. And I'm, I'm not expecting a lot from this shade. I just want something just along the crease a bit before I go into a blue. And I'm not gonna do one color. I'm not gonna do one look on one eye and then another look on the other. I just feel like it throws me off, and I am going to the shop after this, so I don't want to look too crazy. Just a simple transition shade. So I'm gonna go into this which I'm so excited about. God, that just looks stunning. I think I'm just gonna start off with this Reunicorn Cosmetics brush. It's quite firm. Just go into this. And I am finding myself digging a lot into this pan so far. But it is like a metallic shimmer. I feel like it can show up better when wet, but I just want something laid down first. Before I go into another shade, I'm just going to use another brush just to make sure it's blended. Blended in there. I hardly do shimmers in the crease, but it's kind of underrated. Okay, so I don't know if it's, I don't know if green's going to go with this. I'm going to next shade. I'm going to play with a lot of shimmers today, so I'm going to go with this lilac -y tone. Feel like that will look nice. I'm going to use my finger for this and just place it down just a bit on there and I'm also going to reapply that blue as well just so it's not disappeared. Liking it. I'm thinking of going into this green shimmer. I've never done this colour combo before so this could go horribly wrong. I have hope. <laughs> I have hope. This pastel green when I swatched it it looked really nice. So I cannot wait to see it goes on. So I'm going to put this in the inner corner for now. Might just do a matte inner corner. And I am using an extra fluffy brush and it's still coming out really pigmented. So I'm happy about that matte. I'm thinking I'm going into the green now or would that be too much? Shall we do it? I am going to wet it though. So let's just see what it looks like without being wet. I am going to use my finger. I'm just going to place it on top okay i feel like with this it needs to be wet it's quite hard to press into the pan uh okay so i did find myself with a nutcracker as well i did have to spray through shades except for the blue uh, the shimmer blue so let's try now i feel like this is going to be a very wintry look oh yeah see what i mean spray the brush people it does wonders i know i said i like this green shade but I am finding myself having to reapply it because it's just so pastel-y. Um, I'm just having to reapply it constantly. The shimmers are actually performing really nice. It is slightly texturing, as you can tell, it is making my lids crinkly, but I do have quite mature lids at the minute, so I can't help that. Wish the pastel green was pigmented because I am finding myself having to reapply it. Okay, so I am going to put something on the brow bone. I think I'm just going to go with this white. Might be a bit too powdery though. Um, so this white up here. It is coming on quite thick on a brush, so just whack a bit off. Yeah. It is on the powdery side, that white. But it's still highlighting, sort of. Just playing around it off camera, but I just thought I'd mention I've just took one of these sponge applicator brushes and I've gone into the white. I wish there was names on this palette, and I've just plucked it there. Just give it a bit of a highlight moment. Just thought I'd tell you. 
Right, be right back. Okay, whilst I'm here, I am gonna test out the Gingy highlighter. This is absolutely adorable. It's in this tin packaging. It costs eight pounds. Gingy. <laughs> this is adorable. I think it's gonna be way too dark though. Smells incredible. Like, come on. Do you, do you think I'm gonna get away with this? Let's watch. It, no. <laughs> this is gonna be too, right, I can't judge. And I'm wearing a really cool look today, so I don't think this is gonna go. Yeah, this is too dark for me straight away. I prefer a highlighter that's more champagne-y and more leaning towards pink. More on the cool side. Uh, I'm not much for really warm highlighters, but formula, it's very good. Um, it's blinding. I just feel like I can see a bit of a stripe, so it's causing a cast. Yeah, it's too dark for me. I've just had to look in different lighting. If you like this tone of highlight, you're probably gonna like it because it does show up quite well. I might as well just put this Donkey lipstick on. This costs six pounds. This is Donkey. So it's like a pinky nude. That's smooth. Wow. Hmm. Very creamy. I really like this. It's a really nice nude that is, it's a nice tone. It has got a shine to it, so it doesn't dry down matte. It feels quite velvety, creamy, very comfortable, feels quite lightweight. I was only gifted this shade, so I might on the way collect the others, because I really like the formula of this. So guys, here is the first look using the Happily Ever palette. Um, I'm living for those cool tones. Um, <laughs> I really like the look I came out with. Um, I feel like I had no issues really with the shades that I've used today. I'm happy with this lilac and this green. I would suggest wet in the brush though because I think it'll look a lot more brighter, it'll look a lot more popping if it's wet. I didn't really notice much fallout with the shades that I've used. But yeah, I'm just hoping this pan won't go hard over time. Let's check back in tomorrow for tomorrow's look. So we're back for look number two and I'm thinking of going into some pinks this time. So yeah, I'm gonna start off with this shade here. I'm just gonna set my base with this light pink shade. It's very light on the skin, this pink here. Um, yeah. I'm gonna use this hot pink now. Okay, now that's laid down, I'm gonna go into this blue, this shimmer. I'm gonna try my best, like try and mix it in with the pinks. Don't know how this is gonna go because it is a, sh a full on shimmer, so. That is creating a pretty cool color. Cause there isn't really a light purple in here except for this shimmer. Like there's not a light purple matte. Let's try this. Pink. I've really struggled with this pink down here of swatching it, so I'm gonna try and see if this applies on okay with the finger. It's like a satin. Okay, it applies a lot better on the finger than it does swatched. I'm gonna go back into this pink again, fill the inner corner a bit, and then I'm gonna go back into this pink. Maybe mix into that as well. Just on the inner corner part. So for my next shade, I'm gonna go into this white again. I'm just gonna pop that in the inner corner. I always love pink and purples together. I'm gonna try and go with this pink again and see what it looks like wet. Okay, it's a bit better when it's wet. I'm just gonna take this shimmer in the corner here and just put it on the brow bone. I feel like you do need to dig into this. It's a bit on the powdery side as well. I'm also gonna take this purple as well, just to add a bit of depth on the outer corner. So guys, here's the second look using the Happily Ever After palette. I'm really liking this one. This is also another cute way you could wear this palette. The pink and purples go really nice together. However, this pink is not my favorite pink to work with. It's very hard to press into the pan, which makes you have to dig into it to get a pigment. So yeah, I'm not impressed with this pink. However, this blue shade, 
works really nice. I didn't typically use it as a full on shimmer. I used it with a fluffy brush and just fluff over the hot pink and it's just made a really nice purple. So I've already swatched this. It does swatch really nice. If you want to make it opaque, go in with a flat brush. I've been enjoying using this white as like an corner highlight and brow bow. I really enjoyed this hot pink. It came out pigmented. It swatched really nice and yeah, so far so good. So I'm back again from look number three and I was thinking of playing with some of the neutral shades in here because I haven't really touched those. Well, I haven't put them on my eyelid yet. So I'm thinking of concentrating on this area. Maybe use this red with the oranges. I did say, I did say earlier in the video, I do think there's too many similar shades in the gold, but like, okay, there's one similar shade in the gold. There's this one and this one. I just think they're too similar. Like, do we need both of those? Probably not. Just orange here. I'm gonna start with this shade. Okay, so I've got no issues with this orange. It applies on very nice. Okay, I'm gonna go into this shade down here. This is the darkest neutral they have in the palette. Okay, so no issues with that shade, that's absolutely fine. I am gonna go into that red now. This is a red shimmer. When I did swatch it though, it did lean more pink. I still think that red is quite on the pinky side. I wish it was more potent red, if you get me. It might look red against these neutrals. It's like a satin, the shade is. I really want to brighten a corner, so I'm going to go into this yellow gold shade here. I'm just going to focus this on the inner corner. I'm thinking of going into this shimmer here, this gold, and just put that where there's a gap. Um, it's got, it is very sparkly. But I feel like it's not quite smooth. I'm going to go into this. I remember I swatched this. I should have gone this earlier. Oh, that looks nice. Maybe just on the outer corner a bit. I think I might close the gap with this red a bit because um, I feel like that's a bit better than the gold. So here is the finished look. What do we think? This look reminds me of the time when I tested out the Mother of Dragons palette. I prefer the shades to the Mother of Dragons. I just thought they were more pigmented. I still like this look, but I feel like I have done it better with a different palette. I do prefer the two looks that I did before this one. You're gonna have to let me know which one you prefer. This palette, let me just say, is so much fun. I've been excited each day to come up with different looks. It's just quite inspiring to look at, like to, which colors to go in for. I am going to make my mind up on which I am decluttering. I think I've chosen. I think I'm going to declutter the Nutcracker. I just feel like I've had more fun with this. There was a time last week that I was about to film with the Nutcracker and I just sacked it off because I just couldn't get creative with it and I am going to do another look with it. I just had to move on to a different palette but I didn't have that with this. So that being said, I am going to declutter the Nutcracker at some point once I do another video of it and explain <laughs> but is this worth 20 pound i feel like 20 pound is a lot for these palettes the nutcracker is also 20 pound as well which doesn't really make sense because that's not really a licensed palette whereas this is shrek i do still find it's expensive I, I, I feel like it should be 15 i don't think the quality is worth 20 pound but that being said it is shrek so we have to remember it is a brand that is well known. I'm happy to have it in my collection. It's been really fun. I feel like the shades in here are hit or miss. You're gonna get some good ones, especially the blues and the pinks in here, but then you're gonna get some kind of misses. Actually, this pink, I did not enjoy. This pink was a very much of a digger. Got a dig in there. And I have noticed that some of the pans have hardened up. They've got like a film on them, which I'm not too happy about. I don't know why that they do that. My Looney Tunes doesn't do that. The oranges that I've used today blended out really nice. I really enjoyed those. You've seen my review. You've seen how I've used it. I'm not obsessed but I'm happy. I'd love to know your thoughts down below of what you think of this palette. Have you tried it yet? I will get onto the other stuff. I will try out that Fiona palette in a different video. And I'll also test one of the mini palettes on YouTube and one of them on my Patreon. I think I might do the Puss and Boots for my Patreon. So if you want to be involved with that, I'll link my Patreon down below if you want to see. And yeah, if you did like this video, do give it a thumbs up. It sure helps my channel out. And if you don't want to miss out on other 
makeup from his collection hit subscribe button down below and yeah i hope you have a lovely day now we're time watching this and i shall see you next one bye